What's up, folks? Welcome to the WAN Show. We've got a fantastic show lined up for you guys today. I don't know about you, but I'm like a bundle of land. energy. I am amped. I'm <laughs> amped. I'm going to the first LAN party in, well, that many years, actually, for me at this point. Yeah, I. Uh, it was right before COVID. The, the past before COVID would have been my last one. 150 people. 150 people are over there waiting for us to show up, play some video games. <laughs> and shortly before the show started, I got the play button PC working again. It was overheating. It turns out there was an issue where the heat pipes cross each other like this in order to bring the heat away from the CPU, then out into the heat sink. And the thermal pads that were in there weren't compressed enough. Uh, okay. So there was a thermal bottleneck, but we're good. We're good, ladies and gentlemen. And we've got a great show lined up for you today. We're going to be talking about the rumors that Intel's Arc desktop GPUs, you know, the ones where we had real live people from Intel sitting in chairs next to us talking yeah. about them. Yeah. There are rumors now that that is canceled. Canceled? You, you can't, you can't cancel Arc GPUs. Well, maybe, uh, maybe you can. There's been some stuff going on over at I was waiting for you to see that. Oh my God! This uh, this the write up for this is literally three pages long. Okay, well we'll talk about that in a little bit. In other news, also Intel, Optane is dead. If you want Optane SSDs, get them now because they're not making any more of them. My goodness, what else we got? Uh, other than all the Intel things, uh, you know, I, I guess we're we're we we talked to overkill computers. We did. So and that's interesting. Spoiler: the writer Ploof, who chatted with them, kind of on their side now. Interesting. Yeah, the how the turntables have turned. Okay, that's gonna that that seems hard to accomplish. So we'll we'll see what happened because uh, that is interesting. <laughs> Other than that, there's literally one topic. It's AMD confirms four Ryzen seven thousand CPUs, maybe by accident. Whoops! Let's roll uh -oh. that intro. It didn't work. Is my stream deck not working? Anymore? Try it. Oops. I wouldn't try it. Anymore. The show is brought to you by AMD, Secret Lab, and Ubiquity. Ooh, Ubiquity's a WAN show sponsor. How fun is that? All Very right. Cool. Why don't we jump good gravy right into yeah, our this is a monster. topic. Yesterday, I don't know if it's still yesterday, but anyway, Moore's Law is Dead released a video claiming that Intel's ARC may be canceled before Battle Mage. So that's the second generation architecture after Alchemist. Cancelled before Battle Mage even comes out. This apparently has not yet been decided, but is being discussed internally because the whole project has apparently been a poo show and there are serious hardware level problems with Alchemist, allegedly. So that's the, the first generation architecture. This is... Po <laughs> that's the, that's the streaming PC making that noise. Yep, our streaming PC was all like, there's a heat wave. There's a heat wave and I do not like it. I'm firing my laser. <laughs> All right. According to the rumor, this is potentially tied to Igor's lab's findings that have shown that the performance in games, even tier one games, so those are the ones that perform best on ARC, uh, does not scale well with resolution and can have brutal API overhead. Uh, this points to a potential hardware flaw in the scheduler, which would also help explain why the performance can be so bad without resizable bar enabled. In his testing at low resolutions like 720p, the A380 struggled to get above 100 FPS, even though it was close to that mark at 1080p, which is a, a, a lot more resolution. Can the viewers actually even hear that? It doesn't seem to be bothering them. Is that is that a is that a fan? I think so. I think it's got to be a fan. Sounds like a fan or a pump or something. All right. Well, at any rate, Moore's Law is Dead has been saying for a while that Intel manufactured their cards in Q1, and that those dies have been just sitting in a warehouse waiting to be packaged. 
When they made these chips, they assumed that the driver problems could be solved in the next couple of months, then in May or June realized the problems were there to stay. So, and this is all allegedly, they axed the A780, which was supposed to be allegedly the top tier card, which Intel says never existed, and will only be launching the lower end cards. Apparently there were inconsistencies between what we were shown when Intel was here the other week and what is being shared internally. So there's a thing here uh, with some SKUs. Okay, above is apparently a schedule handed out within Intel. I guess I might as well just screen share with you guys. Here is my screen. Here you go. Some SKUs with some launch sketch. So here's A360 at week 25, which is mid-June. And then supposedly early July, we should be seeing A770, A750, and then later on the, the middle, middle tier. So entry level, high end, and mid end. The cards were supposed to start launching blah, 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 blah. at this point. AIBs, so AIBs would be the add in board partners who actually manufacture the finished cards. Intel just makes the, the chips themselves. At this point, AIBs are still in the dark as to what's going on. Here are some quotes also from Moore's Law is Dead. Source one, to this day, we don't know what's going on. Source two, why do you keep asking if ARC is launching this month? We have no evidence that it's in this quarter. Source three, we're going to sit this gen out as much as we can without entirely burning bridges. It's just taking too long and we resent being strung along like this. Eesh. This apparently is backed up by leaked internal Intel documents where the general, general availability date is still to be determined. Even a couple of weeks ago, internally Intel was saying cards would be delivered to SIs in July, but July is <clears throat> going to be over on Sunday. I don't think they're going to be doing a lot of deliveries on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, probably not. And you still cannot get an ARC in a system integrator system. A more recent Intel slide says ARC story, not ARC launch in September. All of which means that as of a month ago, Intel was saying they would be launching all SKUs to OEMs in July and add in board partners would be launching in August, but it is now August, essentially, and add in board partners still don't have the final bomb and design for any of them, let alone the entire lineup. It should be noted that when Intel came here, so I'm, I'm off, I'm off the, the, the script now, when Intel came here, they showed us an Intel first party board, not a third party board. Whereas the A380, the one that's actually already launched, well, that was with third-party board partners. Anyway, apparently all of this has, quote, annoyed executives at Intel because they don't know what an ARC story is and are tired of the chaos. Uh, this annoyance can be felt in this quote from Intel's latest earnings call. So this is from Pat Gelsinger, uh, Intel CEO. This quarter's results were below the standards we have set for the company and our shareholders. We must and will do better. The sudden and rapid decline in economic activity was the largest driver, but the shortfall also reflects our own execution issues. We are being responsive to changing business conditions, working closely with our customers while remaining laser focused on our strategy and long-term opportunities. Boy, is that ever a lot of words without saying that, anything. It sure is. We are embracing this challenging environment to accelerate our transformation. That sounds like CEO talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, that didn't even really sound like annoyed with ARC specifically, but I, you know, ARC is certainly something that hasn't gone perfectly this quarter. Yep. Here are some leaked internal discussions, allegedly. There are high level discussions going on regarding the cancellation of dedicated desktop ARC cards. Data center stays for now, but the dedicated gaming card may be canceled before Celestial even gets a chance. Another source apparently said to Moore's Law is Dead, I cannot confirm the cancellation of discrete gaming ARC, but I also can't say it isn't being considered. It could be. What I can confirm is no good news is coming out <sighs> of the graphics division at the mid-level, and if they do cancel Battle Mage, marketing will still hype up ARC until that decision is actually made. <sighs> now this rumor I've also seen, uh, there could be plans to have an Alchemist refresh in 2023 instead of launching Battle Mage because that is allegedly also having issues, which could suggest there are silicon level issues with Alchemist that can't be sorted out with drivers. That would be, if you're going to refresh a sort of mediocre performer, you'd, you'd think it was to like fix something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. This sucks. Because um, I, I want this to do well because more competition in the GPU space would be good. Um 
but this sucks for two reasons. One, more competition in the GPU space would be good. If it's not competitive, it doesn't really solve that problem. And also, uh, if it isn't allowed to stay on the market, it by default doesn't solve that problem. So hopefully they can figure it out. Now, obviously, Intel isn't just taking this, um, these, uh, whether you want to call them leaks or whether you want to call them rumors or allegations or, or whatever, whatever it is. Um, they're not just ignoring this, believe it or not. I would have kind of expected Intel to just say, uh, sorry, no comment, you know, until we announce something, it's, it's not happening. But Raja Kaduri has already responded to tech journalist Anshel Sag, uh, saying, thanks, Anshel. We are very much committed to our roadmap. We are ramping Alchemist and will continue to improve the experience. You will see more updates from us this quarter. AXG is also on track to ramp four new product lines by the end of the year. Um, <laughs> wow. Now, some of these things do kind of jive with my vibe, if I could kind of put it that way. So the overall opinion from Tom at Moore's Law is Dead is this. Intel manufactured the dies in Q1 with plans to sell this summer. Then things went quiet until the recent media blitz that we were part of, um and probably was brought on by our brutal A370M review. Apparently this media blitz took people internally at Intel off guard because in there it's still a poo show and they have no clue when things will actually be launching. Uh, Tom, and this is Tom from Moore's Law is Dead, read, read is that sometime in Q2 they discover there's a fundamental hardware flaw that can't be fixed with drivers and will require adjustments to silicon. The problem is your shareholders, right? They need to get what they've made out now and launch it as low-end cards in order to recoup at least some of the cost. All of this has prompted the top brass at Intel to seriously consider if this is worth all the work, given the problems with Alchemist and, apparently, Battle Mage. Sag. I don't know, man. Like... I have a hard time believing that Intel would allow this to be another Project Larrabee, especially when you go back and look at Larrabee. Was Larrabee really a failure? Obviously, as a desktop GPU, absolutely. It never, it never even made it across the line, but it would become uh, Knight's Landing, Knight's Corner. It would become Xeon Phi, which was a viable product line for Intel absolutely. for years yeah. to come. Yeah. And given that even the rumors seem to suggest that the data center product is not going anywhere. If you're going to build the data center product, I mean, doesn't it just make sense to also have a consumer product? Shouldn't you, shouldn't you have as broad a product line if you're going to build this IP as you possibly can? I mean, there's a reason that NVIDIA and AMD are doing that. It's not, though, to be clear, it's not that there aren't companies entirely focused on, uh, widely parallel compute devices for the data center. Um, so, yeah, this is, uh, this is one of our discussion questions from Alex, who prepared this topic. <laughs> As seen below, it's not like CEO Pat Gelsinger isn't against killing something that isn't working out. Optane has now officially gotten the axe. But the thing about Optane... Optane was, ran for a long time. It did, but for Optane, the writing has been on the wall for much longer. I mean, well, that's what that's what I'm trying to say. Is like, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I could have said it a lot better, but but yeah, Optane has been around for a long time. When's the last time you heard about it? <laughs> well, like, the issue is that Micron pulled out, so Intel was left with basically no actual manufacturing capacity for Optane. And then if, well, it, it didn't did this say they had a ton of inventory still. Yeah, and they, they had a ton of inventory that they were selling through. The really wild thing is that I guess we're changing topics now. The really wild thing is that the Optane team was apparently showing off benchmarks for their persistent Optane DC modules like a few weeks ago. ago. Look, Look at this. this. This, this is, is next-gen next Optane, Optane modules, modules to go with Sapphire yeah. Rapid CPUs. This, this lines up with what the previous topic was saying, though, where they were saying marketing will keep pushing it up until the exact moment that it's canceled. So then I think in back to this topic, uh, let me have a look here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Back to this topic. What I was told prior to WAN show, it doesn't appear to be in my in my notes, but 
what I was told prior to WAN show is that we can expect a statement soon. It's possible that this tweet from Raja Kaduri that I read out to you guys earlier is the statement, but I was told by Ryan Trout that we could expect a statement refuting these claims. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. It's going to be hard for us to say anything without looking like idiots in six months. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, that's the reason that we don't really focus on rumors here. We tend to wait for the actual product to arrive. So in our case, we had an actual Arc Alchemist GPU that we were able to, in a limited capacity, use and evaluate. Um, and then, you know, from, from my perspective, that's it until I get retail hardware that is actually launching and then I'll be happy to evaluate it again. But you can't ignore rumors like this. I mean, this is explosive for them after all these years, after all these millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars to just say, you know what? Screw it. No GPUs. We're done. We're out. It's weird. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's hard to take off the... I don't even know what hat you would call this, but the person who wants Intel to make GPUs hat. You know what sure. I mean? The enthusiast hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The enthusiast hat. It's hard to take that off. From a business perspective, honestly, yeah. <laughs> I get it. If you have if you have all this money going to this product, if making it for literally any amount of time further is gonna cost a massive amount of money, like this just just knowing what like the engineering that's gonna have to go into that, et cetera, is gonna cost. Like it will be piles of mountains of money. Um and you know that your next release is like already screwed? Yeah, I can understand questioning it from a business side, but yeah, you I... don't go out of your way to lose money for 24 months. Yeah. <laughs> um when you've already been losing money for 36 months, that's a that's a long time to get yeah. literally zero ROI. Like Intel I mean, we we know some of the high profile people working within the ARC group. I mean, it's not like people like Tom Peterson, Roger Kaduri, uh, Ryan Trout, for that matter. Like, even the ones I can name off the top of my head ain't cheap, to put it mildly. And that's just, I mean, that's the tip. Yeah. Just very surfaced, the snowflake on top of this iceberg, right? Yeah. So. I get it. It's an expensive project. I, at the same time, putting the enthusiast hat back on, it would be really good if, if, and then this is this is where we get into problems because if they don't, then it doesn't solve that problem. But if Intel had a competitive GPU, I don't need it to be. I think some people were expecting it to be like the best one. I don't need it to be the best one. I need it to be a competitive yeah. GPU. If it's like a, if it's like a forty sixty killer then sweet. If it's like better for it for than pr in a price to performance stance or or maybe it wins because its thermals are way lower or something like that, then like sweet. Or maybe 50, 60 by the time we get out there. I don't know. But like... And, Can and... I put on my conspiracy theory hat? Okay. Yeah, yeah. If what Moore's Law is Dead says is true, that people internally were blindsided by this media blitz that happened for Arc Alchemist, if that's true, is it possible that the media blitz was a strategy to generate hype and generate support for the project because they knew it was possible that they were going to get the axe? So it's people internally trying to avoid the axe. By making it by making it public, getting gamers, getting the community hyped so that they can try and buy themselves some more resources and some there's, more time. There's is that possible? I mean, I wouldn't put it... It's. It's not impossible. The, the iceberg you described has some smart people in it, and especially as you described on top of it. So I wouldn't put it past them. Um, you know, if, if this is genuinely the situation they're, they're in, I hope that's it then. Because, like, I don't want this to go away. It's really easy to say that when it's not my millions and billions of dollars oh, yeah, going out sure, the door. yeah, for sure, right? So, <laughs> like, yeah, keep spending, guys. Get her done. Um, yeah, look. <laughs> yeah, it's not my money. Let's go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> money machine go burn. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I I hope they succeed because I want to see it. I want to see it hit market, and I would hope it will do well. Um, and like if Battle Mage is already screwed, hopefully the third one that I always forget the name of, uh, whatever it is, hopefully that one they're able to fix it for. If Battle Mage is 
also screwed though. Um, that's not good. Yeah. Cause I mean, okay. Alchemist not even out yet. It's now midway through the summer. So our best case scenario is what Alchemist is out in Q3 at this point. Right. So we're looking like 2024 version three. You need to this sell is. some Alchemist before you can launch Battle Mage, presumably. So at best, at best, if Battle Mage still has problems. I mean, what was really cool was recently we got to take a look at Intel's development process, right? When we toured their uh, design facility in uh, Tel Aviv. And so what I know then from talking to them about how it works, where the design goes to the fab and then it takes like six to eight weeks and then it comes back and then they, they start evaluating it. They find a problem, send it back to the fab. Oh boy, now we get to wait another, you know, however many months, right? Like if there is a is a, a hardware level problem yeah. with early battle mage silicon, which they would have right now, th that could push it into 2024, like you said. And so if they're expected to, you know, sit here and wait another year and a half to have any hope of making, you know, what consumer graphics card, right? What? $300, $400, right? Okay. At best, the AIB is going to take, you know, five to 10% of the margin on this $400. There goes 40 bucks. The retailer is going to take five to 10%. So let's say worst case scenario, right? Like there goes another 40 bucks. So that's $80 of your $400. Intel doesn't make every component of the board. They don't make RAM. So there goes, I don't know, maybe another 50 bucks, 60 bucks. These things start to add. How much margin is there actually in making a GPU and providing especially, a reference design to board partners? Especially when if, if Alchemist and Battle Mage are both screwed, what is customer sentiment going to be? Are you actually going to even be able to ship that? So many? if you're making, you know, 150 bucks, let's say best case scenario, you're making 150 bucks per chipset. Now, hold on a second. No, 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 because I didn't even factor Intel's cost fabbing the chip. I got all carried away with the extra cost. Right. They still have to actually fab the chip. And marketing um, and stuff. Using up capacity that presumably they could use for something else as they build out. Oh, that's the really scary one if I'm on the ARC team capacity yeah now it used to be that intel had a project they set aside their own fab capacity for their own project and that to a degree anyways is, is like it but if they could just sell this capacity to a third party like a tsmc or like a samsung then all of a sudden intel's internal products have to compete for profitability for intel's fab space with external products and it's gonna we know how long it takes fabs to come online i know i know there's been some complaining from the other companies about intel yeah. getting this like whatever it's called but the the grants they're getting to set up fabs in america yeah now hold on a second tsmc is fabbing alchemist but i don't believe that tsmc has any kind of deal at least that we know of to fab battle mage so i'm talking i'm Down talking about battle mage when they're actually trying to get some kind of a return on this investment. It's like, okay, what's our best case scenario? Maybe a hundred bucks a chipset. I, I'm, I'm just, these are random numbers, but it's gotta be somewhere in between $50 and $150. Just looking at all the other components that go into making up a graphics board. And that's the problem with consumer hardware is that that silicon costs literally exactly the same as what you're gonna put in a data center product. But instead of making, you know, fifteen hundred dollars on it you're gonna make 150 bucks just because the pricing is an order of magnitude higher <sighs> sorry yeah. what were you saying i kind of ran I, over I was talking about the I... uh, no it's fine i was talking about the american fab you know yes. how intel's yeah, getting this act. yeah uh the the chips act there's some other companies that are upset about it because they think it's giving intel an unfair advantage blah blah blah, blah. that fab is going to take a really long time to come online oh yeah three to four um, years Easy. And it's not even started construction yet. Yeah, they haven't even broke ground because they were kind of putting a gun to the U.S. government's head like, hey, if you guys don't like pass this act, we're not going to like build any fabs here, which is fair, yeah. I guess. So we're like that 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 new fab isn't even in this conversation, really, yeah. because it's going to be so far out that this thing is probably going to be axed or dedicated to before then. Now, to be clear, some of the CHIPS Act funding is set aside for fabless makers, but a big chunk of it is set aside for semiconductor fabrication, which Intel is one of the top three. And TSMC and Samsung probably aren't building fabs in uh, North America anytime soon. Actually, I thought TSMC was looking at something. Well, the CHIPS Act is pretty intense, so they might be because of that. No, I think even before that. Yeah, mm. guys, uh, I don't know. That's, that's sort of 
ringing a bell for me, but I don't know. All right. Uh, what else is there for us to talk about? Oh, we should definitely do some merch messages today because we have a big launch on LTT Store. Uh, let me just head over to my screen. No, it is not the backpack. Sorry, sorry. Not the backpack yet. Very soon. Very soon. But Stealth Hoodie Pro is here. Thanks, Bell. What's Woo! new? What's different? We have improved the classic LTT Stealth Hoodie in every way possible. It features Whoa. a super comfortable, sleek-backed tech fleece, which is two layers of fleece, meaning there's a small air pocket between them. So it's got quite a lot of warmth for how lightweight it is. Did you hand me Luke's by any chance? There is a chance. You do look pretty small. I think I have too. Luke's. Let's, um, let's try this again. <laughs> I <did it. laughs> we added supportive bar tacks on the corners of the front Kanga pocket. An elevated Linus Tech Tips word mark on the right arm and an elevated LTT logo on the left Kanga pocket. We maintained the phone pocket on the right side, added accent taping to showcase the black. Is this it's like a bloody hell? Uh, the black <laughs> Sorry. and gray front contrast and shortened the hood draw cords for easier use. And of course, as always, it features a YKK zipper. So if you're a fan of the classic stealth hoodie, this is the upgrade that you have been waiting for. It's warmer, more comfortable, and just generally better in every way. So if you guys want to grab one, now's a good time to leave a merch message. If there's something that you want to hear us discuss on the show, uh, when you check out on lttstore.com, whenever we're live, there'll be a field to leave a merch message. Uh, Bell, our producer, is going to be monitoring those, picking out some for us to discuss, responding to others. Otherwise, it might just pop up at the bottom. So you guys can go check that out, lttstore.com. Oh, people, people are asking about the backpack because we've we've been saying it's coming soon for a long time now. We have them in. Uh, there's there's some like uh, specking out and and uh, picture stuff we have to kind of solve. Uh, there's like pretty much no chance it's not launching next week. Love stealth hoodie. There's. Did you talk about these? Are these new? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I, those I are new. That. So they're just a little bit uh, just a little bit easier to use. I just like that they're captive. The yeah. That's really nice. Yep, yeah, it's improved in every way. Okay, I, I can tell you when we're opening up backpack. Oh. Backpack back orders. Uh, it's going to be mid next week sometime, probably Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. We had some issues with um, with some of the pictures. We wanted to improve them. Um, some of the copy on the website, we have a, we have a draft version of the site for it or the page for it rather that has a whole bunch of pictures and like text copy and stuff like that. Some of it needed to be improved. Um, the good news is that the early reviews are in and they're kind of amazing. This one from Steven is just like incredible looking for a quality backpack. I found it. Um, this is someone who picked it up at the pop-up shop that we did really yeah amazing amazing write-up and what's really cool is that steven waited a little bit and actually did a couple of overnight trips including oh. a plane trip oh before writing his review so Whoa. that he could like really give people the rundown on it so cool strongly recommend checking that out all right what to, to oh we should do sponsor spots wait oh we have a deal of the week Spend $100 and get a free tote bag. You do have to add the tote bag to your cart, and your cart must be $100 outside of the tote bag cost. So if you picked up a stealth hoodie and a water bottle to stay hydrated, maybe some cable ties, then you are ready to go. You can get a free LTT tote bag. And it's it's one of those like reusable bags that you could use a lot because like everything we do, it's like way overbuilt. <laughs> looks a little something like this there's the black and white one and then there's also the fun colorful one and we have two different sizes Doop. there you go all right the show today is sponsored by we'll talk about the overkill computers thing by the way right as soon as we're done amd did you know that when you bundle an AMD Ryzen processor and AMD Radeon graphics card, you can get better gaming performance out of your hardware? It's thanks to features like AMD Smart Access Memory, Fidelity FX Super Resolution, and Radeon Super Resolution. AMD is all about turning these things on together so that you can achieve up to a 66% increase in FPS compared to leaving them all off. So with that in mind, if you need to build or upgrade your gaming PC, it's a great time to do it. The Game on AMD sales event is on now until August 5th, where you can get the best deals on AMD products. 
This includes the Raise the Game bundle, featuring up to three games with select AMD Radeon RX 6000 series graphics cards. And there are other great deals on Ryzen processors and Radeon graphics cards too. You can check out all the ongoing deals that AMD has to offer at the link below. How refreshing is this? Game bundles and sales on computer hardware. It's, it's like Christmas has come early. It's Christmas in it July. Weird. It's like we, we transport ourselves into a different time. I know, right? on a completely different timeline now. The show is also brought to you by Secret Lab. Secret Lab chairs are designed to keep you comfortable for those long nights of work and play. Their Titan Evo 2022 offers four-way lumbar support, comes with magnetic memory foam head pillow, It's kind of amazing because you can also move it around a little bit. I like that like, part a lot. The magnet surface is like pretty big, so you can move it up and down. I... The, the strap thing you can also move, but you always risk it. It always comes up. Yeah. It's so stupid. And you risk it slowly creeping up and like popping off the top and stuff. So yep. It's nice. It's offered in four different, oh, sorry. It's offered in different upholsteries like hybrid leatherette, soft weave fabric, and Napa leather. And best of all, a five-year extended warranty is included along with a 49-day return policy, so you're covered if anything goes wrong. Go to the link in the video description and check out secret lab today just high quality chairs uh guys we, we we wouldn't work with just any gaming chair company i know there's this generalization that gaming chairs suck and it's true generally they suck secret lab doesn't suck i can say that much with confidence finally the show is brought to you today by ubiquity their g4 dome is a versatile weather and vandal proof dome camera with infrared leds for clear around the clock surveillance can't say enough about ubiquity's image quality a uh, teaser for an upcoming channel super fun that was is almost entirely shot on ubiquity uh dennis oh, and colton hid in my house again yep and um sorry by the way thanks to ubiquity's outstanding image quality dennis um got to see me very naked we accidentally well i didn't but yvonne accidentally sent him footage where one of the cameras in our house was uh firing into our bedroom it's not in the bedroom but it could see in and i was walking around you nice. know dongers out nice um nice and uh yep <laughs> Isn't this like the second time? Third, apparently. <laughs> it's the third time that Dennis has had to see me naked. But at this point, with how much time he spends sneaking around in my house, you know, looking, looking at my surveillance who's, camera Who's really footage, to blame here? Yeah. yeah. I, I, who's yeah. the actual victim yeah. here? Because yeah. I don't, I don't think, think it's Dennis. Dennis. Yeah. Anyway, anyway ubiquity. ubiquity. Uh, great cameras. Uh, no, <laughs> ongoing, uh, no ongoing subscription fees or anything like that. Uh, the G4 dome is protected with an IPX4 rated weatherproof enclosure uh, with IK08 rated vandal resistance. So it's great for monitoring highly populated areas and venues. And it offers 4 megapixel 24 FPS video with a built-in microphone and is powered by Power Over Ethernet. You can use the link in the description to check out the Ubiquity store today. Did you switch to your screen there for a second? No. Okay, interesting. We had some echo. Oh, weird. I don't know if it's still happening or not. Uh, but, uh, but, well, I will definitely mute this just in case. Sweet. Uh, so do we talk about overkill computer? Is the audio yeah. fixed? Let's talk about overkill computers. Fixed. Fixed. Cool. All yeah, right. Overkill computers. Me. After discussing the OC, which I guess is overkill computers, uh, controversy last week, they reached out to us, which is cool. And we decided to hear their side of the story. So we're going to go through different things that were brought up like the cease and desist the i'm not threatening you comment the six months wait thing the pricing the nda all this kind of stuff we're going to go through them section by section so starting off with the cease and desist this was apparently issued as a last resort after lucas mm -hmm. the owner slash founder tried to reach out personally to circuit board uh once a few videos were up it was a standard approach for dialogue basically uh, and this is, I'm, I'm reading this off the sheet. I don't know if we got like screenshots of this or what, um, but standard approach for dialogue, basically in quotes, I think we should chat when's good for you. Uh, read receipts were on. Apparently it was read three times, um, but was not responded to the, the cease and desist was issued after circuit board put out nine videos, uh, arguably defaming the company in the videos and in the comments. Again, as we kind of talked about last time, um, at least what we saw, I didn't dive into this myself, but at least what we saw while we were live on the show, uh, it was just pointing out that prices were bad, but mm. there was nine videos. We didn't see all of them. 
So maybe there was other stuff. I don't know. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Overkill Computers was getting frustrated um, by by some of the comments, uh, some specifically talking about how one of their staff, who's quite young, uh, they, they pointed out and made fun of the amount of thermal paste that they were using. Uh, but it's just a 14-year-old. So like going after a 14-year-old on the internet is, you know, not great. But criticizing a company that builds computers for money yeah. that is improperly using thermal paste so it's like you're kind of i don't know interesting situation we were sent the full cease and desist we have it locally uh it looks pretty boilerplate pretty standard uh jumping to the next topic the quote unquote i'm not threatening you in the slightest which is obviously bs um apparently the the wife of one of the employees uh started defending overkill computers on instagram and she was then insulted the employee uh then made these comments and they admit it was in poor taste and they admit that uh, it was a mistake to engage in that behavior, which it absolutely was. Um, also, you shouldn't like insult someone who's trying to defend their like husband's company on Instagram, like leave them alone, but both sides. Uh, the six month wait, apparently during COVID, all 70 plus customers uh, were told upfront that there was a, I'm assuming this is people, 70 plus people that were affected by the six month wait. I uh, guess so. I guess so. Cause I'm sure they have more customers than that. I mean, maybe not. Also that maybe not. Uh, but during COVID all 70 plus customers were told upfront that there was a big wait ahead of uh, big wait ahead as all parts were getting sourced. Apparently only a few customers then wanted to cancel and get their money back. Probably because if you were shopping for a computer at that time, you were waiting anyways. <laughs> so it was basically, you have someone else do the waiting for you or, or you wait. Um, jumping into pricing. The website is bad and outdated and they're in the process of updating it. Hence the old 11th gen Intel stuff. Uh, so they're going through a website overhaul. That makes sense. Um, if you make an order, they confirm with you over the phone or by email uh, what your parts list is. The parts are acquired once an order comes in. A big part of the price has to do with paying for customer support when things break in shipping, company overhead in general work. Uh, yeah, that's the cost of things from companies. Uh, I don't think we need to list all that. Uh, there's a one-year parts and warranty on all builds. That was a confusing part. People, multiple people were trying to tell me that there wasn't a warranty. But I checked on their website and they stated there was a warranty. Right. Yeah. And now they're stating that there is a warranty. So I don't right. know where that confusion is from because they actually lay it out pretty clearly. Sure. And they're reiterating here that it exists. So like I, I'm not really sure like who started that, but yeah, they, they have a parts and labor warranty on all builds. Um some of the more expensive builds, like Project Unknown, can involve artists uh, painting intricate designs on the cases, sometimes taking twenty to forty hours of work. Um and copy of terms and agreement purchases are here. Apparently, we have a document for that as well. Uh, the NDA thing that we heard about that we both somewhat dismissed. Yeah, I I mean, it's normal to have an NDA. Yeah, just 100%. Any, any company will have an, uh, an employee NDA. Like, it's just there's stuff you can't talk about. It's that simple. Yeah. Uh, they said that they might not work with embargoed hardware often or even really ever. Uh, so that's not really it. But they, they record most of their builds and put that out on content as social media. Um, so it makes sense when the content is put out. I'm not really sure what that means, but having an NDA as an employer makes sense. So I don't really care. Um, and then the discussion topic is interesting, but unrelated. So I don't know if this makes Ouch. me, uh, well, we can talk about it, but not like right now. Um, I don't know if this makes me on their side. They still obviously did stuff wrong. Yeah. I appreciate the like the the I'm not threatening you in the slightest thing was honestly something that stood out to me a lot particularly it cringe it was super cringe um, yep. I appreciate that they just pretty straight up were like that was done in poor taste yep. and it was a mistake to do that I've said dumb stuff on social media so have I hundred percent yeah so and like like real bad it's it's <laughs> yeah yeah so like it happens Sometimes I appreciate you're just in a bad mood. Like it's yeah. just well, and someone was going after this person's wife, yep. which like, you know what? Yeah, I get it. Um, so I don't know. It doesn't make me on their side, but I'm a little bit more understanding now. I appreciate the apology. I appreciate the relatively quick apology too, I'll say that as well. Um, it's not like they sat on this like 
uh, not to drag Will Smith under the mud, but he sat on this for like months before making an apology. Right? That's what weird. What is up with like, that? Like this was this was I don't know when this conversation happened, but we talked about this last week. Like this was a quick turnaround, right? Yeah. Um. So I appreciate that. Um. I don't know all the details behind this, so the whole nine videos thing. I don't know if there was stuff in there that was genuinely like, um, libel or whatever. Yeah. Um. Pointing out the the price discrepancy thing though is fair. So if if that's all that it was, I don't know that's all, that's all that it was. But if that is all that it was, then I don't really agree with the cease and desist. Um, but yeah, I'm happy they apologized. I'm happy that they're uh, seemingly not trying to artesian bills themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was pretty rough. Uh, Rockman 05 Linus say bad things on social media never yeah well that happens from time to time things happen <laughs> apparently Will Smith apologized long ago and there's a oh man now chat's just talking about talking about the slap uh, but yeah. apparently not to Chris Rock so I don't know I don't know I don't yeah wasn't wanna... this one more like I don't know I didn't even watch it I'm not going to to be completely honest because I really honestly don't care I shouldn't even brought it up but anyways yeah that's the that's the overkill computers thing I'm happy that uh, they followed up with us, and I'm happy that we brought it to Wancho again. Let's uh, go ahead and have a look at some of our merch messages here. We've got some curated ones. Bell, you got some to read to us? Sure do. First one here is from Alex. Obviously, we are very pro right to repair. Do we have any plans to do anything for our products in the store? Maybe schematics or repair guides for the backpack or screwdriver? Uh, I mean, for a backpack, um, if you want to repair it, I think you get out the sewing kit. And you put a patch on it if it really comes to that. I, I, um, like, I don't, I, like, what repair guide do you really need? I don't want to be like that about it, but it's a, it's a piece of, yeah. Yeah. I don't, would you call a backpack clothing? No, right? Well, it's still textile. It's made out of fabric. Yeah. Though. It's textile. It's yeah. a textile product. So, you know, if you, you can buy a little patch, sew it on. I mean, yeah. If it came to that, um, as for it's the screwdriver, dangerous. um, We've, it's, you're not the first person to ask, and it's certainly something that we have talked about internally. I think that from our point of view, we, I mean, our, our policy when it comes to defects in our, in our products is pretty much no questions asked um, as it is. So I have a hard time imagining a situation where you would have a problem with this other than like that you lost, like that, that you would require schematics for, I guess. Um, I can imagine products that we have talked about privately, but not publicly that it, could use something like that. Yes. Now that will be different. We do have products coming that will make a ton of sense. To, to have, maybe not schematics, but replacement. I don't think schematics would even make any sense, but replacement parts Yeah. for things and stuff. Um, but, but the screwdriver, like, yeah, I don't know if you, if you like bend the shaft somehow, like. You're probably buying a new screwdriver. Well, the thing is, if you bend the shaft on this, the shaft is it's is in, press fit. Yeah. Uh, with machinery you do not own, and if you do own it, well, then you probably have a shop that you could just turn yourself a new shaft with and put it in. Then, by all means, uh, be my guest, and right? Go for like it. it's, yeah. uh, it's it's a mechanical device where everything is is examinable at a macro level. Like if you wanted to. Oh, here's a here's a funny story. Um, this actually did not make it into the making of the screwdriver video that we shot this week because we're gearing up for launch. But um, have I told the story on Wan Show before about how the the Chinese factory that we're using now actually cloned our product and then sent it to us? What? Okay. Apparently I have not told this story. It's a really it's a really funny story. The point that I'm going to be making over the next little bit is that this is a macro oh. product. Um you can scan it and reproduce it. Like what what like what schematics do you need? It's not like there are it's not like there are ICs on it that where it's impossible to term, to determine what's under the hood and what function it's performing and where you you would need that in order to repair the board right like it, it it's metal and plastic right so uh what happened was we were working with the taiwanese factory right 
that was supposed to produce these things for us like a year and a half ago or whatever, however long ago it was, maybe a year ago. And uh, as far as we could tell, what happened was they were acquired by a large tool manufacturer in order to get around the embargo, or it's not embargoes, but the uh, tariffs on Chinese made tools. Okay. So, so this, this uh, tool brand stopped producing in China, bought a Taiwan-based tool manufacturer, the one that was supposed to make our bloody screwdrivers, and then naturally stopped prioritizing our product because they were busy making their own product. Um, there was not good communication around that. I don't know exactly who to blame that on, but someone. And so our, pro our project got just stalled and stalled and stalled, and the quality of the last sample we got from them was atrocious, just unbelievably bad, the worst we'd ever seen. Uh, we wouldn't have considered working with them at that point, even if they we had had the commitment, it was just it was awful. So we pivoted. We tried to find another factory to do the work. The good news was that there were a lot of high quality, high volume Chinese factories that were looking for work all of a sudden, right? Makes sense, yeah. Because of these these uh, embargoes and whatnot. Because of these tariffs, right? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So we found someone really good, really high volume, really good quality, great reputation. And we engaged with them. And it was quite a bit later that we realized that the zinc housing, the mold for it, well, there were just like a couple of weird like issues with it, right? So we got it and we were like, yeah, this works, but it's not the same. And so what we found out had happened was rather than them making a mistake with our schematics, we somehow got our wires crossed and our drawings were never actually sent to them. What we sent them was example proper screwdrivers from earlier on in the sampling process with the Taiwan factory. So we got back these, these Chinese ratchets that were didn't implement any recent fixes and weren't quite right because what they had done was they had never actually gotten the drivers or the, the drawing. They just got a screwdriver and they're like, ah, oh, we can make this. <laughs> from us, the customer, and they cloned it. And the, the wild part is that the clone in a lot of ways was actually better <laughs> than the Taiwan one, even though they didn't have the drawings and the turnaround. Wow. Unbelievable. Like, like they, they had it back, back in our hands in like eight, eight days, days or something <laughs> like that. So okay, well, I, this ended up being a lot cooler than I expected going into this story. I, I was expecting like doom and gloom. This is actually pretty sweet. So we, so, so the good news is these guys are really good. good. <laughs> <laughs> the, ba so the bad news that is goes back. is that they're oh, is it? I don't know. I'm changing nothing, so I don't know what to tell you. Um. Yeah. Uh. The bad news is that um, we ended up burning some cycles on this problem and uh, and it did cost us it did cost us some time, but everything's sorted out now. And once we got the actual drawings over to them, they were able to do an amazing job. And the ratchets that we have now are better than what we ever had at any stage, regardless of you know who did or didn't have any drawings from the Taiwan based factory. Um, this is actually near final, and I have a final one in my backpack now. I, because, uh, can I say both their names publicly? Yes. AJ and Jonathan are here for the LAN, uh, and I was kind of showing them around because since, since they were here last, you know, they haven't been here since LTX. So since they were, since they were here last, the, the, the grounds, as I will describe them now, has have changed quite a bit. So I was kind of walking them around, showing them new yeah. stuff, and we ran into Kyle, and he showed us the production version. So, yeah, it's pretty sweet. How do you like it? Uh, it's I actually lot. didn't get to touch it because I needed to get back to working, so I was kind of rushing the tour a little bit. Um, but uh, I've used previous versions, and I was already pretty happy with it. So, yeah, I think it'll be good. I'm excited. Nice. Yeah. More, uh, more curated messages. Yes, uh, everyone's asking what happened. I just blame Colton. Uh, you know, he was here last week. He's not with us anymore, though. So don't worry. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, everybody. Mm -hmm. Perfect way of saying that. Too. Actually, dead. <laughs> <laughs> from uh, from Anon. 
Uh, Linus, you've obviously put in a lot of new Wi-Fi and the mobile signal booster. Have you ever tested or used any radio survey software, such as e Ikehow? <laughs> have you ever actually mapped your radio signal? Uh, that's a really good question. I have played around with Channelizer back in the day. Yeah, I was going to say a long um, time ago. Yeah, the Y Spy. I actually reached out to MetaGeek recently because I'm having some issues at my new place that I think will probably be resolved by spectrum analysis. Uh, if they don't get back to me, this looks freaking amazing. This looks super cool. Uh, design, validate, maintain high performing Wi Fi. Yeah, like I'm, we're having issues where in my kitchen, even if I don't have my microwave on, like sometimes I'll have Bluetooth audio cut out from like me to you, which is wild. Like my old house, I could go it's all wacky. the way downstairs and, and have it work. And yeah. it's not even through the concrete floors. Like I don't get it. And then when my microwave's on, like everything becomes completely unusable. Uh, those Sony wireless speakers in the living room, sometimes I get cutout issues with them, even though they're not even that far away and they worked fine before. So I really need to figure out what the heck is going on. Um, Bell, do you want to note this down? Because this could be a pretty cool uh, potential partner, right? Like sometimes that's what happens. We end up doing, we end up covering something editorially and then they experience the LTT effect. They're like, I want me another hit of that. And we're like, <laughs> Yeah, but we already like covered your product. So I guess now you pay. And they're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened so many times. <laughs> um, all right. From Adam. Hey, just want to let you know, I saw the Backstreet Boys and I want to let you know how great of a show it was. Not trying to rub it in. They performed 33 songs. You don't know what you're missing. Again, <laughs> I'm not trying to rub it in. Well, Adam, uh, you can go... Is this working? Yeah, you can go f yourself. You can go backstreet back yourself. Um, I am going this summer. Yvonne accidentally spoiled the surprise. Oh. But I have a surprise birthday present, and it is, is it gonna... that I'm finally going to see the Backstreet Boys. Now, we have said that we're at least thinking of planning LTX. No, no, no. It's this August. Oh, like I'm going okay. in a few okay. weeks. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I So for those of you who are not up to date... I had Backstreet Boys tickets twice. I've never seen them live, and I loved them when I was a kid, right? So I was like, yeah, I'm sure, it's good. I, you know, I go see some Backstreet Boys, right? I had tickets twice, and then LTX ended up needing to be on exactly the day of the concert that I had tickets for. That's awesome. Twice. That's Two great. times I missed the concert. Yeah. So I'm going. I'm going. No, there will be no emergency LTX this August. <laughs> From Justin and yes. a few others. <laughs> Any updates on the 64 ounce water bottle? Yeah. Uh, well, they're 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 Jimmy. on the boat, but that takes weeks. And yeah. then once they land or once they arrive, they could sit out in the water for weeks. Yep. And then once they actually come on to land, they could sit at a facility for weeks. So I don't know. I I don't know. You tell us. Why don't you ask the nightmare that is the global logistics system now? Sorry. <laughs> this next next message is from Dominic. I really like this idea. Had to buy a new mouse pad because I had a second kid, so bye bye office and big desk. But my 13 year old daughter loves her new 1500 by 600 pad as a bed rug. That's another way to buy a big <laughs> one. I'm not going to say that that's an officially supported <laughs> use case for the LTT desk pad. But hey. I can't prevent you from doing that. Just like with right to repair, we're not telling you how to use it. I saw someone else in the merch messages today talking about using them as wall hangings for like noise deadening. I'm like, I, I we have not measured them. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have no idea what their their acoustic management capabilities are. That's funny. But hey, you you do you, right? <laughs> From Ben, do either of you like or follow motor racing and specifically the techno technological advancements in categories like Formula E? No. I just don't have the patience for it. I know if you're super into it, it's deep. Like, it's all like awesome. And I and I know whoever whoever like bought F1 or whatever. Uh, they've apparently been doing a fantastic job with it. It's been popping off. There's tons of people talking about it and whatnot. But, like, I don't even watch sports that I, like, played, let alone anything else. So, yeah, it's not not for me. Seems cool, though. I don't know. From Anon, uh, screwdriver holster when? <laughs> okay. 
We're trying to find a good leather partner. I got some belt samples that I am honestly not that happy with. So we're still we're still working on it. I do want to do like a dad Chad Is that screwdriver a holster. Uh oh the belt. Oops. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is this it are you gonna show it am i still wearing my microphones oh i still yeah. have my mic packs yeah. from earlier um all right one moment please do me to take those uh no no i'm i'm good oh crap this one's still rolling oh no. man okay no. well that's a lot that's of, a long clip that's a lot of extra audio and probably a trip to the bathroom or two on there i had no idea that, that was still going nice. whoops nice uh yes Oh, uh, Dead Zone asks, do the LTT swim trunks have a mesh lining or is it like board shorts? They do have a mesh lining. Your donger will not be showing through the front of your shorts. Can confirm. Otherwise, those would have been some pretty uncomfortable try-on sessions with the ladies in Creator Warehouse and me. So this is the, this is the like prototype belt. Uh, my complaints are that the, um, the like, I don't know, like the finishing material on the top and bottom, I'd rather it's just raw leather so that it still looks like it did when it was new, even if it doesn't look as polished. Yeah. Uh, this is really thick and bulky, like this whole part here, which makes it so it kind of like sticks out even through your shirt and makes it kind of hard to like get this in. Uh, I think this is kind of cheesy, the LTT on the inside. I don't know what we'll do. Are you planning on a reversible buckle? No. Then why is it two different colors? I, I, I that's a good question. Okay. Um, and this is a little bit too shiny. I think it's a little bit too dressy right now overall. And as much as I love the the black finish on the metal, you can see it's already yeah. coming off. So just like the screwdriver shaft needs a bunch of work. Um, it just doesn't make sense. You just have to go for what's going to look good in the long term versus what looks good in product photography. Yeah. That's just that's just part of the. The philosophy, I think, going forward for us. We have Echo again. What even can it be? Well, I'll just not talk for a bit. Okay. Does it happen when I'm talking? Is it both of us? Only Linus, though. Uh, do we want to do... Is there a merch message that I can cover? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is or why. Uh, I was hoping it was the mic and then you guys took it off. So. Uh, from King Dragonius. Hi, LTT team. I'm really excited for the backpack. It's beautiful. I plan on using the backpack in my morning travel bag once I'm able to travel around the world. Do you have any new travel tips based on you going through with this travel? Oh, um, trying to tie it directly into the backpack. Uh, I, I think I've got a few. Um, it's bring extra cables <laughs> bring extra us like figure out what your your main device cable is probably at this point USB-C, um but figure out what it is if if it is USB-C, bring some extra USB-C cables i would also recommend bringing some extra cables that aren't what you necessarily use so say you're like a USB-C android person uh bring some bring some lightning cables as well um just so that you can aid yeah. other people in your travels be the hero um have extra battery banks that type of stuff use your bag as the like catch-all solution for like everything usually when i'm traveling i have a couple um like cliff bars i don't have to be cliff bars but some some type of like something that you can eat to sustain yourself just in case you get caught in a bad situation the second you land uh because you obviously can't take it across the flight with you but as soon as you can when you land acquire water store it in your bag yeah um, staying hydrated is huge it helps with jet lag it helps with just not being at well okay jet lag not being as tired it helps you just you know keep moving um hydration's massive and even if you're going on a trip that you think is like really tailored and stuff you're not at home so if something happens knowing that you have food water and like these other supply battery banks, whatnot, to keep your keep yourself going very easily without needing to panic and have big anxiety and stuff like that is just fantastic. So, uh, yeah. the question was apparently Bell was muted. The question was any travel tips. Oh, <laughs> um, Stunner Alpha on Twitch asks, Jesus guys, can you like monitor your own stream, please? How does the setup constantly break? Uh, the answer is we don't know. The computer is cursed. It has ghosts living in it. And yes, we are monitoring it. And there's no echo in my ears ever. 
I don't. Yeah, there's no echo for me. So I, don't I don't know exactly know. what happened, but due to the, how the setup is going right now, I'm pretty sure one of the fins on one of the fan blades for the graphics card like blew off. Yeah. Mid, like actually broke off and flew out of the computer midway through the show. So they had to somehow stop the GPU fans from spinning and put a big box fan in front of the computer. All that happened live yep. while, yep. while we were hosting. It's just WAN show things. <laughs> yeah. That's what, when we were way earlier, when we we're like, do you guys, can you guys hear that? That's because the, the computer was going because one of the fans was unbalanced because the, the I actually the thought it was up. in the stream. It sounded like some kind of weird electrical interference or some kind of weird yeah. noise. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're working on it. Actual ghosts. Raxis over on Floatplane says, don't take shit from Twitch. No one cares about them. True story. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Poor Twitch. Poor Twitch. I don't feel bad. They're for them. losing all their creators now. They made their bed. They no one loves them it. anymore. Time to sleep. Time to sleep, Twitch. <laughs> okay. Go to sleep. <laughs> all right. Next one. Yeah. Hit yeah. me. From Anon, now that I'm not muted. Uh, is there anything consumers can do to prevent companies, i.e. Google, killing products like Stadia and taking away purchases made on or through their product? Nope. Not until there's like huge legislation that's going to come out. That's that's happened recently with Stadia. It's happened recently with, with uh, Ubisoft. It's happened recently with Nintendo. Um, there, was a, there was a rant on Twitter recently um, talking about physical games and I couldn't agree more. If you have the option... I think it's a good idea to buy a physical game. PC games, you're screwed because you'll buy like a physical case and it'll just be empty. <laughs> just be a download code, which is really annoying. Uh, but stuff like Switch, like you know Nintendo is going to screw you over on your digital purchase. They have shown historical patterns of this forever. They will shut down the store yep. that you bought the game on. You won't be able to download it anymore. All these things are going to happen. If you can buy physical so that you will be able to play that game in the future, I would highly, highly recommend it. Because, yeah, games, you you don't own it. They can take it from you at any time and they can stop giving it to you even though you've purchased it at any time. And even if you like a game, if the community didn't dive on top of it super hard, uh, like whatever that VR title was with uh, Ubisoft, it was only like a couple years old or something. Yeah. What if you bought it and it was still for sale after they announced they were going to take it offline? Yep. Like, insane. Absolutely ridiculous. What about the same issue with digital media for movies, music, and video? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if you want to make sure that you have access to a movie, buy the Blu-ray. And then back it up yourself. <laughs> From Dylan... <laughs> How much of the GPU issues with Intel do you think is caused by executives not really understanding the market, if at all? Well, it's not an executive's job necessarily to understand the average gamer. For an executive, they work for the shareholders, and the shareholders want executives to spend money wisely so that it generates a return on that investment. With that said, I think the best executives do understand the product but they also have to understand that other thing, right? So, or the product and the customer, right? So they also have to understand how to get a good investment on money. Because if I'm a shareholder, my options are to invest in Intel. So let's say I have $100. I want to invest in Intel and I want to get some target. Let's say 5% 5, 5 of that back each year. Uh, that's a pretty like okay investment. I Ideally, I'd like more, but hey, it's certainly better than a, a GIC, right? So I don't really have a choice as an executive, particularly a, like a C-suite, a top-level executive. If I am not generating an acceptable return for my shareholders, they will sell my stock, which will inhibit my ability to borrow money, which will inhibit my ability to reinvest, and basically, I'm done. So... It's not, they, they do understand. They just understand different things than what you, know, you or I might consider to be important to understand. And as I said before, the best executives will understand both sides of that. Yeah, yeah. Question from Alejandro. Linus, would you encourage your kids to continue the LTT legacy? 
I would only want them to do it if they wanted to. I, I mean, one of the things that I say to, you know, applicants, interviewees, uh, people internally who, who do work here is that um, enthusiasm is infectious and boredom is also infectious. If you're not actually passionate about this, if you don't actually want to do it, if you don't live and breathe it, you are not you're not going to succeed. And I, I know that I've been I've been accused of being like a like a like a toxic boss. You know, when I talk about how my expectation is that for you to be successful here, you are living, eating, breathing this stuff outside of work as well. Uh, but I, I don't make the rules, guys. That that just it, it is what it is. We are in a hyper competitive industry where the people that you are up against, the 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 young, hungry, scrappy YouTubers do live this. They eat, sleep, and breathe nothing but whatever it is that they're making videos about. And so at the end of the day, I, I do not determine this. I'm not actually the boss here. You guys are. And you guys are fickle. If we do one thing wrong, we see it in the analytics. If we do one thing right, we see it in the analytics. So apparently the echo's back again. I, I can't fathom this. Uh, is it something to do with you activating and disabling your mic, possibly? No? Okay. Well, I don't know. So, I would only want them to do it if they really want to. Uh, next question here. Uh, since I am on the Twitch stream and can't hear it, I'm assuming you're fine. Uh, <laughs> from Stefan. I remember Linus talking about his ADHD as a mental health advocate. I'm curious what sort of things you do as a company to ensure good mental health and care for your employees. I don't know. I think it's probably better to hear from the employees. Bell, Luke, any thoughts? Nothing. We Thanks crush that. people's souls. We try to destroy them. Uh, no, I, we, I don't think there's a huge amount you can do other than just try to be accommodating. Um, I I know, like in certain situations, we've tried to have quiet areas or areas without way too much light. Uh, we we have the flex time system, um, so that if people are having like a really stressful period of time for whatever reason, um, they they have that option. That might overheat. That's probably fine. Probably not. I doubt that's making yeah. a difference. Yeah. Um, the the flex time one is big in my opinion. Uh, because I know in regards to feedback from some of the people that I manage that I've heard is that, you know, we, we don't like the, the people that you work with don't always necessarily have insight on what's going on in your real life. And if something really intense is happening and you just need some time, it's nice to be able to take some time, uh, without major questions. And it doesn't have to take away from your, your vacation times. So you don't feel like you're like sacrificing in that way and whatnot. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's, there's only so much that you can do. Um, as a company and there's only so much that you can do as a company at our size and i think we i would argue that we notably exceed expectations in in those realms but i agree the flex time is huge and we actually get to use it which yeah. is a big thing like yeah. i obviously am a channel manager of a couple different things and i got to take a week and a half off and not have to worry about it and actually take off and uh being taken care of and being able to have people listen here as well uh, if there's ever any problems which they're infrequent for me at least uh, it's always very listened especially with linus who uh, is very busy don't kiss he, us he'll personally make time which is very nice so uh, we have a we have a good team here for sure um yeah i mean obviously this is sort of me talking about it there are other things that we do as well we have a summer fun program which we actually just recently relaunched i forget what the exact terms of it are but i think as long as you have five lmg employees we will cover up to $100 per employee for you to just go out and do something fun together. Um, and we're pretty, we're, we're pretty liberal in terms of what that thing is. So if you just want to like go blow a bunch of money at like an arcade, like we're like, oh, I'm sure uh, someone's trying to go to the track and bet on horses. I saw an application for that. I think we're probably going to reject that. That's pretty <laughs> stupid. Uh, but <laughs> don't really want to support gambling. Yeah, yeah. That's really not. That's really not the point of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
to be, I just want to make something clear. Flex time is separate from the provincially and federally mandated vacation time. So it's, it's on top of that. And it's something that we rolled out during COVID just to make sure that a people were able to take time off when they needed it during an extremely stressful time. And B that, um, anyone who was sick, wasn't feeling pressure about losing money to, to show up at work when they, when they really shouldn't be there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to There's think. also the the uh, spontaneous day of fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you can't really count stuff that's like a one-time thing. Why but, not? They, yeah. they were asked about things that we've done. Yeah, we we try to we try to just pay fairly. Um, I think that's that's something that can't be can't be understated, right? Like it's all fine and good if we have like summer of fun, you know, yeah, we'll we'll cover you like to go do a team building exercise with your colleagues. It's like, yeah, clearly there's something in it for us there. Um, but also just like paying people fairly, I think I think matters a lot compared to a lot of media industries, in spite of how competitive we are. Um, and in spite of the uh, like I said, the 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 scrappy, the the scrappy up and comers that are constantly gunning for us, right? Like we we still try to work a nine to five schedule. That's really important to me. Nine to five, five days a week. There are exceptions. The land that we're running right now is obviously an exception, but for the most part, uh, we try to help people maintain a work life balance. There's there's only so much you can do to help people maintain their mental health at work. Um, you just have to like not be at work sometimes. And yeah, that's what I was trying to get across earlier. Like there's there's only so much that we can do. You can't like. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing too, is like just listening, right? Like there's a limit to what you can do other than just listen sometimes. Yeah. From Tyler, always been interested in using an external GPU enclosure with a laptop. Is there a silence oriented enclosure I should be looking at? Is it even a good idea anymore? Hmm. Silence oriented enclosure. I don't think they're going to be silent silent because they all have small form factor power supplies, which are just not very silent. Um, I know Gigabyte is still in that market. I think that there are some more Mac oriented brands that are still in that market. I'd say that, you know, compared to your laptop, they're probably not any less silent. As for whether they're a good idea, are you sure an RTX 2060 Legion laptop would have Thunderbolt 2? It's got to be Thunderbolt 3. If it's a Type-C port, it's either Thunderbolt 3 or 4. I really doubt it's Thunderbolt 2. Um, but is it a good idea anymore? I mean, it's not the most cost-effective thing, but once you've made the investment into the enclosure, as long as you get one of the more generic ones, nothing would prevent you from changing out the graphics card as you go. So it's a one-time cost at the very least, and so far it looks like Thunderbolt is not going to evolve beyond the Type-C interface, or at least connector. So, yeah, I mean, I'm super into it. I think it's super cool, but the most practical thing and the most cost-effective thing is to have a portable laptop and then a powerful desktop compared to having, like, a powerful laptop that you then, like, hook expensive dongles into. Yeah. We're echoing again. Yeah, I sent Bell a message. Apparently, it's something to do with one of the lower thirds, potentially. I don't know. That was one theory. Right now, it's covered, but no, 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 it's not the one that we thought it was. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's a mystery. Yeah, I don't. That would be extremely yeah, surprising. Pretty mild, so I think we'll have to live with it for the next little bit here because we've uh, we're not quite sure what it is. Okay. From Samuel, love from Quebec. Love the water bottles. I have seen LMG grow up from the house era. Are you afraid about the possible coming recession affecting the growth of LMG? Yes. Yeah, we've been making a lot of investments lately. The timing couldn't be really, well, it could be a little worse for us, but um, we're at a, a, a somewhat vulnerable um, spot. We're in a, yeah, it's it's not a great time for consumer confidence to be going way down for there to be uh, just geopolitical conflict around the world. And, um, and then we're expanding. And, and yeah, we're, we're expanding, you know, a big, a really important thing to us is making sure that everyone still has a place to live and food to eat, you know, taking care of, taking care of our own. So nothing's getting cheaper, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been really, really stressful. I think uh, last time Yvonne and I sat down and looked at it over the next 12 months, we're projecting something like maybe 60% the profit level of what we had the previous 12 months. So it's been pretty heavy. 
uh, backpack and screwdriver if they are just smash hit knock it out of the park successes could change that but you know i'm not going to count those eggs before they're hatched also timing for stuff like backpack and screwdriver is is rough they're worth it they're great products but they're premium products and um you know premium products can get hit by by recessions um to be clear the hyper premium product you know like your three thousand dollar pair of shoes or whatever um, i sent luke a hilarious yeah. article that like yeah. hyper cars in the uk are up 17 percent year over year just like okay sure uh, but it's the <laughs> it's the premium but not you know that um tier that tends to get hurt yeah from frost coder always enjoy the twitter back and forth between linus and dbrand if you had to dbrand your house what design would you go with oh, i'd probably go with a big thing that says F- dbrand yeah nice F- those guys nice fair yeah i'm pretty sure the homeowners association wouldn't be super into it but it'd be there for a little while yeah (laughs) until i get fined (laughs) from anon i've been getting into pricing together in nas and some of your videos mentioned vms what would be the use case for a nas vm for home users well i couldn't speak from experience here but you know um somewhere to to something to use for all your torrenting so that you're not using your daily driver machine is something that uh, people would use a vm for Um, another thing you might use a vm for is running server software that just you don't want to deal with like some command line Linux install. So Plex Media Server, for example, can easily run in a Windows VM that would sit on your NAS rather than having that running on a desktop in your house that might get shut down on a regular basis. Like a server, the expectation is that it's going to be running all the time. Um, it's not a VM, but it's a Docker container, which is kind of related uh but you know home assistant is running on in a docker container on my server so things like my lights and blinds would have their commands run through that particular server can you think of anything else uh no that 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 first one you know i don't remember exactly the details of what you're saying but that seems like a really good point uh the the yeah yeah. if you ever want to just download something sketch and you don't want to do it on like your computer even even if you're not worried about the tracking of it, if you're worried about it being bad. Just like a virus. To be clear, yeah. using a VM does not mean that it's it not can't save spread you. all over your network. For sure. But there are it's malwares like it doesn't help. that do not spread on your network. So that, that could be a way. I mean, you Docker know, one, containers, yeah, for sure. One thing you can do is that you can, you can access a VM without it actually being on the network. So you could just disable its network interface and execute whatever executable it was and see if it's you know horrible um so as long as you've got it as long as you've got it network gapped probably you'll be fine but not a guarantee as well it's not something that we would necessarily recommend if you actually want to play around with stuff that you think is like probably malicious it should be completely air gapped that is to say not physically connected to your network at all and a vm is sort of inherently connected a little yes Tom asks if you'd heard of the ODD class action lawsuit, if you had any thoughts or would be participating. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, That's pretty funny. Uh, You can get 20 bucks because of like price fixing on optical drive media in like the 2000s or something. (laughs) But you don't have to provide any proof of purchase because the class action found that like it re- you could reasonably say that anyone who was alive at that time was affected by it so I mean, you just fill out a fair. thing and you get 20 bucks sweet yeah so i should do it yeah nice <laughs> this was in canada sorry uh, everyone else nice finally something for us canadians yeah i know right <laughs> uh taylor asks it's so cold we win those <laughs> is there a particular channel super fun activity that stands above the rest for you uh i Uh, really enjoyed playing like knee hockey upstairs even though i think everyone got horrible rug burns and i injured my wrist like badly like it hurt for weeks (laughs) Um, that was that was pretty fun (laughs) i'm trying to think uh in the dark like glow stick fight was pretty fun just like hucking glow sticks at each other i remember we did something where we were like catapulting water balloons at each other that was like the first one 
Was it? We hit you right in the junk. Yeah. I'm surprised that <laughs> stood out as like a good experience. You went to that? I, I, <laughs> I did not remember that part of it, to be fair. Um, I'm trying to think. The pranks were really fun. The two like big ones. Mm-hmm. Those were really fun. Mm, yeah. The, uh, the, the uh, office theft prank. That, that one was, was... My revenge was so sweet. That one was crazy because b- both of those pranks, I was so convinced by... I guess partially mine, but mostly I guess everyone else's reactions that I started getting wrapped up, even though I knew what was actually happening. I started like you had to like go somewhere. I think I think they like disabled your car, so I was gonna like drive you, and my brain wasn't like I need to tell them at some point. I was like I'm driving to the airport, <laughs> 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 and like I remember uh, when we were pretending that the 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 office was robbed. Yeah, like people started like running around trying to like see if we could find the person. Because if I remember correctly, we had someone run out the back door. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "I'm gonna find him." Yeah, I'm going with you. <laughs> now, how is it that you get to play both sides all the time? Like every this? You single seem to time. know about every single prank. Yeah, Why? I don't know actually. Why? That's not fair. We should I... prank Luke. Nah, nah. Yeah, nah. Yeah, let's see Luke naked. <laughs> let's plant a bunch of cameras in Luke's house for a change. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that might not be a great, great idea. From Trith? Hello. <laughs> Thoughts on the Call Me Chris collab after some time now? That six-hour cut is wild. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, honestly. It was funny. It was it was good watch. Yeah. Uh, Chris is one of the most talented content creators that I've had the pleasure to work with. There are There are certain people that are, like, you know, pretty good, and then there are just absolute professionals. Like, Justine is just such a pro. She crushes it. Um, Chris such a pro uh you know there's i don't know there's there's just there's two kinds of youtubers they're the ones that there's the ones that are just really passionate um who i think um wouldn't have succeeded in traditional media because they just didn't have that you know that polish right and that works on youtube it's good to be raw but then there's the ones that could have done it. They they could have just been that that point zero zero one percent of the population that just just slay. They're just impossible not to like. They just turn it on and it's like, wow, you make that look really easy. I remember when we had Tom Merritt on the WAN show. Yeah, I was actually gonna. Yeah, and the the guy like much smaller audience than us for some reason. But he basically gave us a lesson on how to host a podcast on our own freaking show, right? Like, just a pro. Same I remember Chris after Perilla. that show, both of us sitting back and going like, huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. we kind of suck at this. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Chris Perillo was the same. The yep. guy was balancing, uh, talking about the topics, interacting with us, and interacting with the chat, and was doing all three of them better than I could do one. And I'm just like, Darn. Can you just make tech videos again? <laughs> yeah, like for real, Chris. I don't know. He's probably What's he not doing watching these this, days? but I don't know. Probably Star Wars something. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But yeah, Chris is Chris is one of those people just who is an outstanding wit. She's sharp. She's always ready with something, and you can really appreciate that over a long, tedious, many-hour project. Um, the fact that she is on so consistently for so long when she's so tired just gives you some idea how talented she is also a savage some of her uh snapbacks were pretty good (laughs) yeah yeah it was it was to the point where i didn't feel like i had to pull any punches no like i'd go at her i'd go at her as hard as i as i can at that point (laughs) because i knew that i was just gonna get it back just as bad like yeah it's one of those things where i really i really appreciate a snappy put down like that's that it's it's part of my sense of humor it's uh, i i like you know got him you know like i i love it i love it um and like i'm never i'm never serious i don't want to hurt anybody's feelings i'm not about that but i just i do like that style of humor and so sometimes i will end up in situations where because i appreciate that style of humor i will just i'll go hard at someone and even if they don't care even if they don't give a fuck and they're just like i yeah i think that's funny but they just like take it they don't dish it back I, I, I'll feel bad. And then if it ends up on camera, 
I will look bad. I yeah. will look like yeah. just a complete yeah. monster. So honestly, it's just kind of a mental load off for me when I'm hanging with someone that is going to dish it back as hard or harder because I can just let loose. I can just be like, yeah, I'm going to say whatever the most horrible offensive thing that pops into my mind is because no one's going to be like, oh, poor Chris, oh, what a victim because she's going to be equally evil to me. Last right back. I don't remember what she said, but she said something that was really good. And uh, I saw your reaction and I think you played for the camera a little bit, but I could tell uh, from your reaction that the, the overwhelming reaction was like, Damn, that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> that, was, that was funny. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, cause, like I said, I don't, it's not, it's not going to hurt my feelings. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. But I appreciate a really snappy put down. I like it. <laughs> Question from Caden. Do you think certificates like CompTIA Plus are worth it? Neither of us has it. It's kind of an old time thing at this point, I would argue. Um, I think it was much more viable back in the days of early operating systems and like liquid capacitors. Less internet? Less internet, yeah. Like it was... I wouldn't bother unless there was a specific place that said they were looking for it. And then I would just get it and that's it but like honestly if you're applying there and they require it that's like a little weird there's some people asking if i'm gonna have chris fix my hair no tasia already did it so you can see my uh hold on it's not like it's not like done properly or whatever but like the fade is good now. It, yeah it looks stuff. way better yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's fixed up yeah tasia was the one who coached dennis so i had the pleasure of hanging out with her for an hour and we talked she watched the video and so we just basically like talked shit about Dennis the whole time because she's like yeah I don't know where any of that came from that is not what I showed him like I'm watching the video I'm going along I'm like what the f is that yeah. when he just starts doing stuff it's like yeah that's not how I coached him I promise I, I will give you a competent haircut I'm like yeah yeah I believe you I'm here <laughs> it looks good yeah yeah thanks from Cole Linus how much longer do you think you have to wrap up your new house what's left and how's the pool progress going <laughs> Why are you gonna be like that? Because I asked you yesterday. <laughs> why? Why are you gonna be like that, Cole? Cole. Yeah, that's who said it. Oh, yeah. Rough. Um, and I don't know. It depends how much I can turn into video content. So one of the things that's gonna take just a really long time is getting everything like perfectly cable managed, like ordering cables in the right lengths and getting all the chargers like wall mounted and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna make that a video. <laughs> So I've had Harrison working on that for like over a week. Oh my God. <laughs> it's great. Um, so things like that will accelerate it. Theoretically, the trades are supposed to be back in this week. They showed up only today. So I don't know what happened the other four days. Um, maybe they'll finish up in the next couple of weeks. Who knows? They're supposed to shoot the concrete next week for the pool, but they probably won't. So I, I don't know. I don't know. The backyard's like kind yeah. of exploded. It's actually a dumpster fire. Yep. From Sai, Sal? Maybe I just have turned to my screen. I think it's Sal. Sai. <laughs> Sai. It is Sai. Okay, we're good. What was the decision you made when growing LMG that, in hindsight, was maybe too much risk? Doing it at all? <laughs> that's it. That's, that's the a whole good answer. answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst part. That was the dumbest thing ever. It was so sketchy at the start. Yeah, it was like you have no idea. All right. Well, from Alex, uh, Linus, and Luke, which wireless earbuds would you recommend? And Linus, were you able to find any replacement for the AirPods Pro? I still rock the AirPods Pros. I have not found a replacement for the excellent active noise cancellation. There is really good active noise cancellation. Sony's is excellent. Sennheiser's is very good. LG's is okay. Um, but Apple's is excellent tier. Uh, the size of the the size of the carrying case, like nothing is quite there. LG's is quite strong. Um, trying to think who else is in pretty good shape as far as that goes. Man, it's just like, oh, so good. Um, my, mine is close, but not the same. I don't like it when they go in your ear. My ears are a little weird and they just push them back out. Um, 
So I have the just OG AirPods. And even though I'm on Android, I like them the most out of everything I've tried. So Yeah, sorry guys. It is what it is. Yeah, Adam liked the new Bear Dynamic Freebird earbuds that they just released. Uh, apparently the battery life is insane. I think it's 11 hours. Wow. Yeah, so it's he was pretty impressed with those. Okay, I'd have to check those out. Cool. Uh, from Anon, is there a dream collab? Anybody that you would love to have on the show or do a video with? I think someone asked this like last week when you weren't here, and I basically was like, I don't really watch a lot of YouTube, so I don't really know. I, I, I like people in general, mostly. Okay, I mostly don't like people, but I like YouTubers in general. <laughs> I, I don't know. There's something about YouTubers. I just like, I'm like, yeah, we all kind of cut from the same cloth. Like, I just kind of get along with them automatically. So, I, you know, I, yeah, it's always fun, but I, it's, it's hard for me to just get out of my, my focus bubble sometimes and, and think about that. And to be clear, I, I like you people. You guys are my tech people. It's just like when I have absolutely nothing in common with someone, I'm just... A lot, just, of the, a lot of the a lot of the people know. that what I would I say to you, I don't know. A lot of the people that I would like to collab with the most we already have. Yeah, that's fair. That's it for merch messages. We got a land to go to. Yeah, let's get out of here. All See right. you later. Bye. Oh, right. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs>